So I left you kind of hanging here, huh? I showed you how to make a gluten-free lasagna, but not how I really make the bechamel sauce, which is a crucial ingredient for a lasagna bolognese. And certainly bechamel sauces can be used for anything. You can put it over pasta, you can use it as a base for a white sauce. It's good to know how to make a nice, delicious, gluten-free bechamel sauce. There are definitely basic steps for a bechamel sauce, which, if it's glutinous or not glutinous, doesn't really matter. And then there's that difference. Which gluten-free flour actually is tasty? So in the first part of the video, I'm going to show you the step of making a bechamel sauce with any kind of gluten-free flour. And then the second part of the video, I want to test actually which flour combination creates a nice, rich, tasty bechamel sauce. And ideally, so tasty that it will fool anyone to think it's the real deal. To make my gluten-free bechamel sauce, I'm going to first add 50 grams of delicious Irish butter and melt it in the pot. And I'm going to add now the remaining onions, which I have left from making the lasagna sauce. Cook them for about five minutes. And now I'm going to make the tricky part of a bechamel, which is called the roux. And in plain English, a roux is really just a paste. So here's 100 grams of my gluten-free flour. And I'm going to add that now to the butter. And I'm going to start stirring the butter and the flour and the onions with a whisk until it forms this roux, this paste. In other words, I want it to be a thick mass. I'm also going to turn down the heat now. Unfortunately, the paste here or the roux is a little bit too thin. I do want the paste to be more like a thick dough consistency. So I'm going to add another 50 grams and hope that is enough flour to thicken up my paste. So now it's becoming this really thick dough-like paste. This is a perfect roux. And now I'm going to add some milk and I'm going to add about one liter. And you really at this point often wonder how is that going to come together. You're going to add a little bit of milk, then you're going to whisk it again and try to combine it. It's good to have good biceps for this. You hope you didn't get too many clumps in it, which is sometimes hard to see. So I normally try to smash a little bit the flour against the side of the pot. But then at the same time, a bechamel has onions in it. How do you know there's a flour clump or an onion? So in other words, I don't sweat it too much. So now the sauce is becoming pretty smooth, it's pretty thin, and I can add much more milk to the sauce all at once. I noticed that always on the side of the pot, there's always some of the flour which gets stuck. So I'm using often my spatula to move that a little bit. I'm going to stir it again. And that should then thicken the bechamel sauce a bit more. You can see how thick it is now. Make sure you do it carefully so you don't spill it all over the table. Also already did. And certainly it's better if you have a bigger pot. Also very helpful. Something what I like to add to any bechamel sauce is a little bit of nutmeg. And I'm going to use about a quarter teaspoon for that. Again, I'm going to add a little bit of salt. Definitely needs a bigger pot. That's a very nice thick bechamel sauce, which I can use now for making my lasagna. So I just showed you how to make a bechamel sauce with any kind of gluten-free flour combination. What I have not done yet is test which gluten-free flour actually gives the gluten-free bechamel sauce a nice rich flavor. So I'm gonna put that to the test now. How will cornstarch, rice flour, sorghum flour, or millet flour taste in a bechamel sauce? And what flour actually gives me the richness and the flavor of a wheat-based bechamel sauce? Are you ready? Let's get started. And I'm gonna heat up now 400 grams of milk. The step I didn't do for my lasagna. Okay, the milk is starting to steam, so it's warm enough. And I'm going to take the milk now off the heat and set it aside. And I'm going to heat up now my small little pot, which I'm going to use for my bechamel experiments. 
I want to melt about 10 grams of butter, about a teaspoon of onions. This is my chopstick, certainly. Here is my cornstarch. Cornstarch is clumping up. And I'm going to add about 100 milliliter of milk. And I'm going to whisk it in again into my roux. And I'm going to stir the milk again. And ooh, there are a lot of clumps in it. So I'm going to add a bit more milk. Keep on stirring. Yeah, I'm not thrilled that I got a lot of clumps in it. So I'm going to use my spatula to smash some of those clumps. I don't think my cornstarch bechamel edition is a keeper. It's definitely a bit gross. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of that. Let's do this again. And I'm going to use now my white rice flour. And now I'm going to add my white rice flour. And I'm going to add about 100 milliliter of milk. Okay, that's a pretty thick, nice bechamel. And I don't have any clumps in it, so that's good. I mean, you taste the butter. Um, but there's not much additional flavor to it, which makes sense. It's white rice flour. Let's do it again. I'm going to use sorghum flour. As you can see, the flour is much darker than Millet or white rice flour. And add some of the milk. It's also nice and thick. So I'm going to pour that off as well. The sorghum has much more flavor. It is also much heavier. It might be too heavy for my bechamel sauce. And here's my last experiment. The one with millet flour and rice flour. So here's my millet flour. It has also pretty good texture. It's nice and thick. The millet flour based bechamel sauce is probably closest to the one with wheat flour. It's nice and rich, has a good texture, and at the same time has a little bit of an extra flavor, which is missing with the rice flour. So the next time I'm gonna make bechamel sauce, I'm gonna make it probably with just Malay flour. Now, if I want it a little bit softer in flavor, I'm gonna probably do 70% of my Malay flour and 30% of my rice flour. I hope you enjoyed today's video on how do you make a bechamel sauce? And what is the best flour to use? I think I could just eat it like that, you know, like a soup, like a bechamel soup. I mean, it's just flour, butter and milk. Ah, oh, so rich, so tasty.